Do you have numbness and tingling of your hand? Do you wake up at night with pins and needles and have to shake it away? You could be having carpal tunnel syndrome. Carpal tunnel syndrome is a condition where the median nerve, which runs from the forearm to the hand, becomes compressed as it travels through the carpal tunnel in the wrist. This can result in symptoms such as pain, numbness, tingling, and weakness in the affected hand. This condition is often caused by repetitive hand movements, such as typing or using a computer mouse. Carpal tunnel can also be triggered by having the wrist bent for a prolonged duration, such as driving. When we sleep, our wrists are often bent and under pressure for long hours. This causes the pressure in the carpal tunnel to build up over time. The median nerve under compression becomes irritated and wakes us up with pain, numbness, and tingling. In severe cases, the hand starts to become weak, as well as numb. It starts to be increasingly difficult to hold onto things. The median nerve is surrounded by nine flexor tendons in the carpal tunnel, with the transverse carpal ligament on top as the roof and the carpal joints below as the floor. Conditions such as diabetes and rheumatoid conditions can cause swelling of these tendons, leading to pressure on the nerve. Other conditions such as arthritis of the carpal joints or wrist fracture can also reduce space within the carpal tunnel and causes nerve compression. A simple way to confirm the diagnosis of carpal tunnel syndrome is to use the CTS-6 tool. The patient is asked about the symptoms such as numbness and tingling in the thumb, index, and middle finger, as well as nighttime symptoms. This examination demonstrates thinner wasting of the left hand with flattening of the muscle bulk compared to the right. Next, we check for weakness of the thinner muscle. The patient is asked to point the thumb up and to keep the thumb there against resistance. Here, the thumb abduction is weak and gives way under pressure. We then compare sensation to light touch between the two hands. Here is the Tenal test. Direct tapping over the carpal tunnel to elicit patient's symptoms of tingling and numbness. Lastly, the Fallon test. Direct pressure over the carpal tunnel with wrist flexed up fully. During the next minute in this position, the patient is asked to describe symptoms of tingling and numbness, such as in the middle finger in this case. Here are some of the treatment options for carpal tunnel syndrome. Medications such as anti-inflammatory can help reduce painful inflammation of the nerve. Other prescription medication like pregabalin and nortriptyline are specific to nerve irritation. These can cause drowsiness, therefore best to take before bed. Wrist splint help to maintain straight position of the wrist. This can help lower pressure within the carpal tunnel particularly during sleep. Reduce repetitive stress on the wrist such as regular rest from typing and driving. Can also help to alleviate symptoms. Cortisone steroid injection can be placed into the carpal tunnel. This is done in the clinic. The symptoms will improve over weeks to months, but frequently recur. Surgery can be done to release the carpal tunnel. This is often done by opening up the transverse carpal ligament under local anesthesia. The patient will need wound care over two weeks. The relief of symptoms are mostly permanent. Here we are performing a cortisone injection in the carpal tunnel. The safe way is to avoid injection into the nerve itself. The needle is introduced on the ulnar side of the palmaris longus tendon. The palmaris longus tendon can be identified by opposing the thumb to the little finger with the wrist slightly flexed. The skin is sterilized. A 20 to gauge needle with 1 mil of cortisone is used. This is placed to the ulnar side of palmaris longus tendon. The needle is aimed away from the hand at 45 degrees to the arm. The needle is slowly advanced. The patient is checked to make sure there is no sudden change in the feeling of the fingers. This indicate the needle is too close to the nerve. Often there is a slight give of resistance when passing through the fascia. Cortisone is then pushed through. Patient can return to normal activities straight away. Thank you for watching. Please like our video and leave comments below. For the latest update please subscribe to our channel.